You want to be a pilot, but ever since you crashed into that cow and it exploded on the runway, they won't let you near planes. Well, it doesn't matter because Fly Inside Flight Sim X have released a tool called Fly Inside Flight Sim X, which lets you play Flight Simulator X with the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. Now, this tool is absolutely incredible. It's, it's pretty much unbelievable that this tool is not an official update for Flight Simulator. Now, Fly Inside isn't new. Uh, a while back, you remember, we did some videos on it with the Oculus Rift DK2. But crucially, now it supports the Vive and the consumer Oculus Rift. And even more importantly, the developer of Fly Inside is absolutely bonkers and just keeps tirelessly plugging away, updating it, improving performance, and he's one of those developers that's always active on the forums looking for feedback and pretty much immediately replying to any question that people raise. Now, though on the face of it, Fly Inside FSX looks like another one of those patches or mods that makes a non-VR game a sort of VR game. And yes, it does do that. It does put you into what is uh, originally a 2D game and lets you use your VR headset with it in the same way that you might expect from something like Vorpex. But what's different is that the developer has made a concerted effort of not only doing that basic VR support, but also including stuff that's crucial for the type of people that you typically find train spotting on a Saturday morning. And that is the ability to place windows, any window you want from windows, in the 3D space and uh, then be able to see them as you're flying along. Now, if you play normal games, this might seem like a, a bit of a ludicrous feature. But if you play flight simulators, now, I'm, and I'm not a hardcore flight sim nut, so uh, this is a little bit beyond me. Though, as you can see here, we put an OBS window in because we thought it'd be a good test. But if you do play flight simulators seriously rather than a filthy cash then you, you um you'll see people using uh, advanced plotting tools maps planning uh, routes and a whole plethora of separate applications to the to the basic uh, simulator in front of them to make their flight more realistic or more like a commercial flight um and it really allows them to get into the, the sort of uh, planning aspect of, of flying, which is what a lot of people that play Flight Simulator X really enjoy doing. And the way you place the windows in the 3D scene is absolutely fantastic and pretty seamless. You, you just position them using a, a button you set on your controller, uh, either a HOTAS or if you, use, you can use an Xbox controller, and then you just look and move a little cursor around and you've got options for scaling and positioning it. Um, we, it just works really well. Now, the developers also made a really concerted effort in uh, making it so that you don't have to take your virtual reality headset device off your head once you've got going. So you put your headset on, you launch Fly Inside Flight Sim X, and it loads up into its sort of matrix, Fly Inside Flight Sim X matrix uh, lobby, where you can then see the uh, flight simulator details, all the stuff like the what you see on the win you know, in Windows side of things. So uh, you pick your plane, the route you want to do, uh, graphics options, control options, you can access all that from the Fly Inside FSX Matrix lobby and then you can just launch into the game and then when you quit the game session you're in or the flying session you're in, it will go straight back to the lobby allowing you to then change uh, settings and do what you want to do before you go back into another flight. Now thanks to Fly Inside uh, FSX you can access most of the menus, launch, a, launch a, a flight and pick planes and do a lot of the basic stuff just using the head cursor and a button on your controller so a lot of the time you don't need to use your keyboard and mouse but because Flight Simulator was obviously designed for Windows and uh, for use with a keyboard and mouse it is easier if you are playing this sat at a desk, for example, or with a keyboard and mouse right in front of you to be able to uh, activate and mess around with menus that are a little bit more complicated and, and really weren't designed to be clicked with a headset cursor. Now, in terms of performance, Flight Simulator X is heavier than the average girl on a night out in Newcastle, so you do have to bear that in mind and you probably will need an IBM supercomputer to run it on higher settings uh, and then hitting the uh, higher 90 frames per second that you probably want for full-on immersion and uh, no stutter. But with my uh, i7 and the GTX 970, even whilst recording, if I cut the graphics down, some of the terrain details, and then take advantage of things like the reprojection, I think Flying Side FSX also has its own time warp, 
you can actually get usable performance from it. And if you're flying high, um, you know, you, you don't look at all the grand details because it's so far away. Uh, yet you still get the advantage of feeling like you're in the plane. All the cockpits look absolutely stunning. And that's where it runs best with the least performance impact. It's, it's the same old thing with flight simulators, really. It's when you're on the ground, things tend to run slow. When you're high in the air, things run a lot better. All said and done, Fly Inside FSX lets you fly inside Microsoft or Dovetail Games Flight Simulator X. And it does an absolutely fantastic job of it. There's also a demo that you can download which lets you basically test it out in terms of performance if your computer can run it, lets you see some of the aspects of the Windows things but the flights are limited to 15 minutes. So again if you're a complete filthy casual and you're just the kind of person that's going to load it up and do a little poodle, the demo is probably fine for you. Uh, whereas the full version will be more for those people that are really hardcore into flight simulators. And let's face it, there, at the moment there's only DCS and... Uh, this with Microsoft Flight Simulator and Prepare 3D that let you do VR flying. Uh, so I think it's absolutely fantastic. And as I say, but as I said earlier, the main thing is the developer is so passionate about this and has been supporting it for so long and is so active on the forums. It's really nice to uh, you know to, to keep it going along and seeing, seeing where they take it. Of course, we had to do the obligatory climb out of the uh, the aeroplane or rather micro light to test the room scale and uh, that gets me on to the next point um, flight simulators for me definitely do trigger motion sickness when doing specific maneuvers it turns out being 200 foot in the air at 60 70 miles per hour whilst doing a loop the loop outside of a plane isn't uh, isn't good for uh, keeping your stomach happy not sure why, but it isn't. If you are susceptible to motion sickness, though, I think some people, even in the cockpits, might have a little bit of an issue with uh, flight simulators in general. So it's worth, uh, if you do feel that, turn it off, get your bearings back to you, and then, then go at it again once you've recovered. There's no point trying to soldier on through motion sickness. I, I've tried it, and it's not worth it. And uh, eventually, some people do acclimatise to it. Uh, having said that, for me, it's, it very is dependent on uh, the type of plane, the cockpit, the altitude, and what you're doing with the plane as to how motion sick you feel, which makes sense. I mean, if I'm in a commercial jet and the plane banks ridiculously, or the times I've been in a thunderstorm and everyone's screaming and luggage is falling off the, uh, the, the top racks, you would definitely expect that to cause more motion sickness than if you're on some lardy da posh cruise with perfect weather and no uh, thermals or anything affecting the, the, the plane. So I think that covers pretty much all the basics with Flying Side Flight Simulator X as, a, as an initial, it's not really review, but it's an initial impression of the features. Grab the free demo, as I say, just have a, head over to the website, create an account and grab that, give it a, a go, see how it runs on your computer. End of the day, I think everyone's a, a winner with this. Make sure when you do launch it, you're not launching through Steam, but you launch through the Flying Side Flight Sim X icon with Steam VR running, though it should launch Steam VR. Uh, otherwise, you might get it loading up in big picture. But there we go, Flying Side Flight Sim X. Check it out now. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, like, and drop us any comments if you have any. And uh, we're going to check out some more planes in Flight Simulator very soon indeed. We still need to set up our HOTAS properly as well. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.